The Cardinals shuffle some things in their bullpen, signing one player and a surprising DFA of another. Is this an appetizer before the main course of moves that are forthcoming? This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can find us on places like iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast. We're also on YouTube. Check us out there. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So the Cardinals made some uh, moves today. Some some moves. Nothing huge, but moves where they designated relief pitcher Henesis Cabrera Cabrera for assignment, which was a bit of, of, of a surprise. And they signed veteran free agent reliever Ryan Tapera. Now, we'll have more on these moves in segment number two. But first, I want to go back to the weekend uh, real quick. Uh, I know I want to apologize for this coming out so late. I was traveling from St. Louis today and uh, was moving around. So uh, it it took a while to get through and uh, get to where I could do a recording. So here we are. But uh, I want to take you back to the weekend a little bit. Cardo said, what I deem a solid return from the all-star break, taking two of three from the nationals. And I, I know it's the nationals. I get that. They're not a good team, but taking two of three is positive. And I'm looking for anything positive these days. So let's not try to find the negatives in this series. Let's just kind of enjoy the positive. Shall we? Uh, After a strong start to the game on Friday, we get the rain delay that postpones the game until Saturday afternoon and ends up costing the team a Miles Michael a start. He's starting tonight, by the way, on Monday against the Marlins. Uh, but that sucks because we know the bullpen is not very good. It's worn out. Uh, Michaelis gives you one of your better chances to win a ball game out of the starters that you do have. And did I mention how bad the bullpen is? Because they stink for the most part. So um, naturally, the Cardinals put up five runs of offense, but the defense Let's them down with a horrendous three error inning that yields three runs to the Nationals without them even recording a hit. Just ugly stuff. You know, uh, I, I give credit to the team because the offense came back each time uh, when they would fall behind. The offense picked them up and uh, were able to send it to extra innings on Saturday in game one. But Jordan Hicks had a rough 10th inning and the birds fall seven to five. All five runs come on uh, home runs by Newbar, Brendan Donovan, and Wilson Contreras. Uh, Palante and the walks continue to be a problem. Uh, the defense clearly didn't help Andre Palante, who needs all the help he can get because he has struggled with the zone all year. That continued. His struggles in 2023 continue. Uh, it's rough watching Andre Palante pitch. Uh, living and dying by the home run, never a, a smart thing to do, although fun. It's fun to see him hit the long ball, but um, it can leave the offense inconsistent at times. You got to be able to score in other ways. You did put up five runs, but when your pitching's as bad as the pitching has been for the Cardinals, it's it's likely not enough. Um, when things have been different, and Michaelis was able to continue his game and not get washed out, probably because Michaelis has thrown well recently. But you know that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So moving on to Saturday night, which is Game Two of that split doubleheader, you get another offensive explosion. From the offense, they ripped the Nationals for nine runs on a season-high 17 hits, and they win this one 9-6. to Nolan Gorman's two-run double in the fifth, obviously a huge hit. Alec Burleson had three hits, including a home run. Uh, Rookie catcher Yvonne Herrera, who everybody seems to really like what he's been offering both behind the plate and at the the plate when he's hitting, had a three-hit game. 
Uh, Brendan Donovan remains hot to start the second half of the season. He gets a two-run triple. Nolan Arenado goes yard his 20th of the season. Uh, on the mound, Steven Matz, I mean, <laughs> we know how bad he's been, so I guess he was okay in this one, but he remains winless on the season after he ran out of gas after four and two-thirds innings. Dakota Hudson comes in. He fires three and a third innings of shutout ball, and then uh, Henesis Cabrera, who we will talk about here in just a little bit, Finished up the game, allowing two runs in an inning and a third as they win this one, 96. Um, offense has been great. I mean, you can't really blame them for many of the problems that are going on lately. You know, we've had moments where they would just go into a huge funk and we couldn't figure out why these guys aren't hitting. That's not really the problem right now. They, they've been giving the team a chance to win almost every night, which makes you wonder how good the team's record could have been had the, had the team had just average <laughs> pitching out there instead of the terrible pitching staff that they've assembled not only in the starting rotation but in the bullpen just you know it makes you wonder and go mm, what, what could have been this year uh sunday a game that i was at my grandmother celebrated her 98th birthday so uh we we we, we bucked up and went into freeze landing where it's all you can eat and all you can drink hopefully you saw some of those photos uh on the uh locked on cardinals twitter account but uh, it was kind of nice under there, especially with the weather just going all St. Louis on us because you had hot and sunny early on and then it was raining later on in the in the day. So you had the, you know, roof on top of you there. So that was kind of nice. Um, the Cardinals were a little slow on the field to to put any offense together. Um, they, they got guys on, just couldn't get them in in the first three innings. In fact, the Cardinals had been 0 for 8. With runners in scoring position, leaving six runners on base through the first three innings, I know that they had a guy on third every single one of those innings. But they eventually broke through against Josiah Gray in the fourth when Nolan Gorman led off the inning with a single, which was the uh, first of four consecutive singles for the team, leading to a three-run inning, which was a lot of fun to watch. Um, not having to rely on a home run every time to score runs, it's good. Uh, Gorman ripped his 18th dinger. Speaking of home runs, uh, did that later in the game, had three hits on the day. So hopefully this is the beginning of Nolan Gorman kind of breaking out again and turning things around after the, the nasty June and start to July, uh, Jack Flaherty on the mound dominant until the sixth inning where, uh, the, the nationals began to hit him around a little bit, but the, they, they let him work his way out of it, which was kind of nice because I could have sworn they were going to yank him before that inning was over. And at this point in the season, don't you just want to let these guys try to, to get out of these things? Like, let them do it, okay? You're not really playing for anything anymore. And um, he gets out of it, you know? He, he leaves the game after a quality start. He was in line for the win, which he ends up getting. He walks three, also punches out seven, and... Um, did see his streak of not allowing a home run end after 56 innings in the second inning. Uh, gave up a solo shot there. But all in all, a really good outing for Jack Flaherty. Uh, that's four consecutive wins for Jack. He's pitched really well in the last three as he basically auditions for other teams as we creep towards the trade deadline on August the 1st. Uh, we did have that rain delay late in the game, but the Cardinals go on to win this one 8-4. Uh, Goldie hits an absolute bomb to the grassy Nolan center field. 443 feet away uh, was the estimate, his 16th of the year. I'll be honest, it was pretty cool. I tweeted this out, too. It was pretty cool being in freeze landing and just seeing right there to my right, uh, the ball just go, whew, boom, and the land right into that grassy area. Um, I also mentioned online, and this got a lot of attention. I was kind of shocked by this, that uh, they ejected a, a young kid for jumping out onto the grass and trying to go uh, retrieve that Goldie home run ball. Um, I, I didn't feel bad for the kids. Some people are like, oh, let them have it. Let them have the ball. It's okay. What's the big deal? I mean, it clearly says in multiple areas in that in the, on, the, on the grassy area there that do not by any means go onto this this grassy field you cannot run out there they basically treat the center field grass area as if it was part of the playing field so you're not allowed to just have your kid jump onto the field and grab a ball real quick and come back on uh come back into the stand so um you automatically get kicked out those are the rules and i know it seems cruel because he was a little kid but rules are rules parents shouldn't have let him go out there and the other side of it double whammy he didn't even get the ball like the, the usher guy who ran out there, grabbed it and just and like scolded him. And it was like, you go back to your seat. And then they came down and ejected him. But usher guy walked away with the ball. So I don't even know who ended up with it. But uh, 
that that was uh, an interesting uh, little little moment there uh, out there in center field. Also, shout out to Lars Newbar who ended up uh, throwing a ball. He fired a ball close enough to the back of the bleachers in between innings that actually deflected into freeze landing where we were all sitting. And uh, my um, cousin's kid ended up grabbing the ball. So he got a free souvenir courtesy of Newt. So thank you, Mr. Newt Barr. Uh, Jojo Romero, another shutout performance, his third in a row, which uh, might have helped lead the team to what ends up happening to Cabrera here where he got DFA'd. Chris Stratton, another shutout inning. He's a candidate to get moved at the deadline so the better he pitches. Uh, the better chances that the, the Cardinals get something in return for him. And um, as an observer of the game, I do want to point this out because people talk about it all the time, the attendance. Okay, paid attendance announced at the game over 42,000. There was not 42,000 people at that game. I would say there was maybe 20,000 at this game, and it really cleared out after the rain. But it was pretty empty in case people were wondering if uh, – Fans have started to try and send a message to ownership in the front office about how things have gone here in 2023. All right. We're going to talk about the moves that were made with Cabrera and Tapera. I love the fact that they rhyme. <laughs> we're going to talk about that next on Locked on Cardinals. If you want to win 100 times your money on daily fantasy baseball, then the Sleeper app is where you need to go, my friend. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. They've become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users in 2022. And it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories, and of course, making money. Sleeper is now offering up to 100 times payout for up to eight pick contests. So you think Nolan Arnato is going to go yard tonight. Is Wilson Contreras going to get a couple hits and stay hot? Michaelis, will he continue his recent streak of pitching well? If you believe so, use the Sleeper app, swing for the fences with up to 100 times payouts. All you got to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stack categories like home runs, strikeouts, hits, etc. Get your picks right, you can win big. Entries can be made in 30 seconds or less. It's easy. You've got safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states. Use the promo code locked on and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational again in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. The Cardinals battle the Marlins at Bush Stadium tonight, tomorrow, and the next day. That's three in a row, in case you can't count. And you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals Hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Again, thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Uh, always looking for feedback. It's welcome. It's encouraged. Whether you want to hit us up on YouTube or on Twitter, feel free to, uh, to contact us. Now, we knew that changes were coming, right? We knew this was coming. Um, especially after Mo made the announcement last week that, yeah, we're, we're looking to sell. Okay. Or it's not a fire sale. We're not trying to give everybody away, but we're going to trade some people. That's really what he got to. And, um, there will likely be plenty more moves to come, but we began Monday morning with a move that I think most people felt was a bit surprising. I know I did. The Cardinals designated left-handed pitcher, Hennessy Cabrera. For assignment this morning, uh, Cabrera is only 26 years old, uh, been with the team since 2019 for a couple of seasons there. In fact, he thought Hennessy's Cabrera was the future of this bullpen, that he was going to be a huge part of uh, things to come. And it just has not worked out. You know, it, back in 2020, even 2021, amazing, especially 2020. Uh, over those two years, though, had a 3.41 ERA in 92 and a third innings. He displayed elite strikeout numbers, especially in 2020, where he was uh, averaging 12.9 strikeouts per game, had a 33.3% uh, strikeout percentage. Uh, that dipped to 9.9 .9 in 26 and 21 in 2021, but it, that's still pretty good. The real issues, the, the one that in particular is the walks. That, that's been a problem for Cabrera. His entire career, even in 2020, he had high uh, walk numbers and as dominant as he could be, you would go, you would see him go out there and he would just light it up and he had some flair out there. And I love that, but he'd have this dominant outing and then he'd follow that up with uh, a, a couple of bad outings by putting runners on. And although the strikeouts were up again this season, his ERA kept going out, his hits per nine kept increasing every single year since 2020. Uh, they went up 2020. 
he's at four hits per nine. That was his average. Then it goes to 6.7, then 7.9, then 9.0 this season. His ERA plus keeps going down, 175 in 2020, then to 105, and then it's been at 86 the past two seasons. Another thing that's been going down, his velocity. His velocity has been something that has really dipped, going from uh, around 98 on average back in the day to uh, 95-ish. And that, that's a big difference. And that has led to more hits and especially more home runs. He's given up 14 long flies over the past two seasons after allowing just six in 2020 and 2021. He's been in inconsistent. That's the best way to describe his his Cabrera. is just inconsistent. Uh, moments of dominance followed by bad outings by a couple of them. And then he goes back out there and you're like, oh, there's the guy that we really like. And you see him for a couple games and then he vanishes. And it just got to a point where even last year he got sent back down to Memphis. Remember? And that was a big deal. And we know he's got talent, but sometimes you just have to turn the page. Sometimes you just got to turn the page after so many so many opportunities, okay? And uh, manager Ali Marmel on the move today said, quote, I, I thought it was the right time for him to have a change of scenery. Also remember, it was Hennessy who showed Ali up a little bit last year when he removed him from a game in Hennessy. Didn't like the fact that he was getting taken out and decided to spike the ball on the mound and was going to walk off in a, in a huff. And Ali had to grab him and go, whoa, 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 we don't do that here. And, uh, you know, you could see Pujols talking to him in the dugout after that. And, um, you know, it, that's a big no-no. You don't do that. And it just showed a lot of immaturity. Whether he's matured since then or not, I don't know. But John Mosellock said this on Cabrera, quote, I don't think he loved the role he was in. And ultimately, as I was trying to get this to work, we just kept hitting some headwind. Now he'll get that opportunity to do it somewhere else. So it's not like they're like, hey, thanks for everything, Hennessy. You were great. Uh, we appreciate you and good luck. They're more kind of like, dude, we've had enough. We, we've had enough of it. And now he can go do whatever he wants to do with whomever he wants to do it with. Um, and Hennessy, if you want a better role, you know what you got to do. You got to perform. You got to perform. You got to earn it. And his numbers didn't warrant that. Now, most of the bullpen this year hasn't deserved to be used in big situations, but Cabby's now had four years, four years to prove that he needed, he could be an elite arm from the left side, which is, you know, people always want left-handed pitchers, but he just regressed, continued to regress. And uh, to a point where now his services are no longer required. Uh, Ryan Tapera is who they ended up signing and uh, putting him on the active roster immediately, 35 years old. And uh, in my opinion, is just another one of those low-hanging fruit type of moves that Mo is you know, infamous for. He could pan out, could pan out, could earn him a new deal at season's end, either with the Cardinals or somebody else. He was really good a couple years ago, if you remember, when he was with the Cubs and then the White Sox. Uh, so good that the Angels signed him to that two-year $14 million deal um, 2022, he was okay, but la this year he was bad. He posted a 7.27 ERA through 10 outings before the club uh, DFA'd him and ended up releasing him. Now, the righty ended up landing with the Rangers after the Angels let him go, uh, signed there on a minor league deal, reported to their AAA club, tossed eight scoreless innings, but was unable to get a roster spot with the Rangers and opted out of that deal last week. Cardinals decided to scoop him up. Uh, money wise, it makes sense for the Cardinals. They're not going to have to pay him much. The Angels are still on the hook for the majority of what's left on that deal. And the Cardinals will only be responsible for the prorated league minimum for any time that Tapera spins on their roster. And with guys like Stratton, maybe even Jordan Hicks as possible trade candidates, you're going to need some arms in that bullpen if you move these guys. And it doesn't hurt to give Tapera a chance to prove that he belongs in the show still. You know, the Cardinals aren't going anywhere. So. Why not? He gets an extended tryout, basically, with the team until the end of the year, and maybe he earns a spot on the squad next year. We'll see. Uh, let me know your thoughts on both moves. You know, what do you think about them, DFA and Cabrera? What do you think about them signing to Para? Cabrera to Para. That's just so funny to me that they, <laughs> they did the rhyming thing. Uh, let me know in the comment section below on YouTube or hit us up on Twitter. We got some injury updates coming your way next on Locked on Cardinals.
The Cardinals are home against the Miami Marlins for the next three games, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Uh, when I heard the Cardinals were activating Andrew Kisner on Sunday, then uh, keeping Yvonne Herrera on the roster, I wondered if it was just going to be something very temporary with Tyler O'Neill set to return. But he was not activated today, but it does appear that he will be activated tomorrow, which means the team will still have to make a move of some sort. Uh, if it's not moving Herrera back to Memphis, then maybe Jose Fermin gets sent down again. Uh, but he's the only backup infielder that they have on the roster at the moment because of the injuries. And, you know, uh, Brennan Donovan is still about a week away from being able to play in the field. So um, they got to figure – I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, they'll figure something out. They'll make the move. Um, I, I, I continue to say if you're going to keep three catchers, it, you better use them. You better use them. Contreras better be DHing more, and you better be letting uh, Kisner and Herrera rotate like they need to all be playing. Because if you just bench Herrera, you are doing more damage than you are good to that young man. So don't let that happen. Uh, Ali also said today that moving forward, the starting outfield will be O'Neill in left when he's activated, Newton Center and Walker in right, saying, quote, at the end of the day, everyone's got an opportunity and we can feel comfortable about that. So that doesn't sound like a great vote of confidence in one Dylan Carlson, who is in the starting lineup on Monday night. Uh, SDLToday.com's Derek Gould provided more updates, saying Ryan Helsley is set to throw off a mound on Tuesday. A rehab assignment could come ahead of the trade deadline, though his return is not expected ahead of the August 1st deadline for deals. The outing on Tuesday will be akin to that first appearance off a mound of spring training, putting him 10 to 12 days away from facing batters. And uh, he threw this nugget in on Adam Wainwright with his shoulder scheduled to throw off the mound for the first time on Tuesday as well. His workout could be more intense than Helsley's, and that puts him closer to a return in part because he has not been away from the mound for as long. The right-hander went on the 15-day IL with shoulder irritation on July 5th, which is uh, 12 days prior to uh, when we're doing this recording. So. There's your latest on the injuries. We know Edmonds uh, dealing with the wrist stuff. Uh, looks like Donovan's about a week away still from playing the field again, but he's still hitting left-hander on the mound tonight in Jesus Lazardo. So hence why he is not in the lineup and Dylan Carlson uh, getting a start in the outfield, which um, I, I feel bad, man. I, ho I hope they haven't given up on Dylan Carlson altogether yet. I just feel like he's gotten the raw end of the deal in, yeah, he has trouble hitting right-handers, but I don't know. I just, unless they're trading him, I mean, it just doesn't feel like they got a lot of confidence in him anymore. Thanks for making Lockdown Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast for this week's series against the Marlins with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, make sure you're tuning in tomorrow. We're going to have more because uh, John Mozalock spoke for a little while today uh, to the media and uh, had some interesting things to say about what's going to happen moving forward at the trade deadline. So uh, we'll get into more of that coming up tomorrow. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason. I'll see you next time on Locks on Cardinals. Have yourself a good Monday.